what is up YouTube welcome back to the channel um, today we are at the recording studio and we are going to track some drums so this is gonna be a fun weekend me and Brad are up here and uh, yeah I get to listen to Brad play drums for two days I can't wait woot okay so let's talk about studio essentials right so since we're here just doing drums we're not doing guitars or anything I had to bring some studio essentials for myself and that would be a cast iron skillet a cooler full of bottled water because I'm old and another cooler with a spatula and this cooler is just full of meat meat yay it's still frozen sweet yep so that's my plan I'm gonna hang out while Brad plays drums and I'm just gonna cook meat <laughs> in my skillet that I brought and play Call of Duty on my iPhone for two days so can't wait for that drums <laughs> drums it's very like the the ambiance in here with the uh, I don't know what kind of lots these are but they're real they're real like they're all vibey though. I like the vibey lights. It's just all fart noises. All the tracks I sent you are just fart noises. That's it. <laughs> just through my pedal board. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, B Rad, how you feeling? Yeah. You feeling pretty good about the. You were you were much more confident about it yesterday. It seems. Well, me. <laughs> yeah. I tried to tune to the pitch of the drum, the shell itself, but. A minor third above on the bottom head. Like, I, I can deal with Nerds. that pitch bend fall kind of thing. I kind of... Drums. Drums. <laughs> so, yeah, we are in Athens, Alabama at All In Recordings, recording with our buddy Kevin Langley. And, um, Kevin, Kevin's great. Kevin did all of my band Witch Hunter's previous stuff. Um, he did mine and Brad's old band Veda. He did our record. Um, and when I was in McPherson Struts, he did the McPherson Struts record. So, been up here a lot and recorded a lot with Kevin. Um, he really knows what he's doing. Really like working with him. Um, you know, I decided to do all the guitars and the bass and the vocals for the record at my house, at my studio that I have. Um, I was pretty confident with doing that. I feel confident with mocking up guitar cabs and bass cabs and uh, doing vocals and all that stuff. But uh, drum production is just a completely, it's, it's like its own thing altogether, you know. And um, I don't really have the space. And I'm not super confident with my uh, skills with like micing up drums and getting good drum tones and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I wanted Kevin to mix and master uh, the EP anyway. So, I figured why not just go ahead and come up here and do drums too. So, that's what we're doing. Uh, Brad's in there tracking drums right now. We kind of did this one, you know, because normally when a band makes a record, you usually will do like, you'll do like your scratch guitar tracks. And then you'll do drums first. 
and then you'll kind of stack everything on top of the drums that are there. Uh, we kind of did this one a little different. We kind of made the record backwards, which was uh, kind of interesting. Um, I did my scratch guitar tracks, and then I programmed drums, and had Brad go over the parts, make sure they were all right. And then I recorded my guitars, and Jesse's bass, and Seth's vocals <clears throat> to the programmed drums. And then we sent all that, all those tracks up here at Kevin and deleted the program drums and now we're doing real drums. Um, I really liked doing this record this way. Um, it's really, it really gave us the time you know, normally when you come to the studio, it's like you're on the clock, you're paying by the hour, all that kind of thing, right? So you're like, you kind of come in and you feel kind of under pressure, you're kind of rushing, you know, you want to make sure that you like, you want to make sure you don't sit around and waste a bunch of money, basically. So, you only have a certain amount of time to like do every, you know, part that needs to be done, guitars, bass, vocals, drums, whatever. So, it was real cool to be able to do the bulk of the stuff at my own house in my own studio because I had like all the time I wanted if I wanted to sit with some tapes for a day or two and then redo them I could I got to spend a lot of time dialing in guitar tones dialing in the bass tones me and Seth got to spend a lot of time working on vocals and not feeling rushed and coming back a few days later and redoing takes you know listening to them for a a week or so and then coming back and redoing them it just it gave us a lot of time and now coming up here normally what we would spend doing everything we just get to spend doing drums so the drums are also getting a lot more time spent um, nothing feels rushed everything feels like we really got to put as much time into it as we wanted to. Uh, tones, parts, everything. So I'm really excited about this record. I'm really excited about the tones we've gotten and the, the songs are, you know, um, I just really like the way the song's shaped up. There's a couple of songs that I think are really cool and really unique for us. And just, you know, I'm really happy with it um, because we got to, instead of making a record in like a week, you know, Let's see, we've been working on this since December, on and off since like end of December, and it's March the 25th right now. So, you know, got to spend that much time working on parts, changing things if we wanted to. Um, it's been really nice. I've, I, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Brad's in there doing his drums. They're going to sound great. Uh, they already sound great. Um, yeah, I'm just really stoked on it. I can't wait for this, this EP to come out. Um, we got a bunch of shows booked this year, and we're going to be putting this EP out this year. We're doing five songs, so it'll be a five-song EP. Um, yeah, I'm just really happy with it. My, my guitar tones are, like, so far, just the raw tracks that I have are so far, like, my favorite guitar tones that I've had in a while. Um said I used my JCM 2000 and both my cabs, the MF280 cab with the 70 watt celestials in it and the 1960B cab with the uh, 75 watt celestials in it, the GT12s. Um, used a couple different mic combinations on those. On the Mode 4 cab, I used two vintage 70s or Unidyne 3s, or SM57s. Um, they're just old SM57s I've had forever, but they sound really good. Um, on the 1960 cab, I used the Sennheiser 906. Yeah, uh, I used the Marshall Mode 4 for all the people that always ask me about the Mode 4. I like the Mode 4. I used the Mode 4 for all the lead tones on the EP. So, uh, a little different texture for the tones uh, for the between the leads and the rhythm and stuff. Um, you know, use my Les Pauls. Uh, use all three of them. I used the Adam Jones for some stuff. The black one. I used the black deluxe for like most of the rhythms. And then I used the white uh, custom for most of the leads. And 
the, uh, there was one song specifically that I did that whole song on the Adam Jones uh, because the Seymour Duncan distortion pickup in the Adam Jones just sounded a lot more aggressive and it fit that song a lot. I feel like it fit that song better. So that's what I used. Um, Jesse used his Warwick double buck Corvette bass for all you bass people out there. Uh, really, really sweet bass. And we used his live bass rig, uh, Ampeg SVT Pro head and a carbon 810 cab. Um, but I just really enjoyed being able to mic everything up and really spend a lot of time dialing the tones in. It felt really good. It's something I've always wanted to do, but you know, I've always kind of felt rushed when we go to the studio. So we like mic guitars up, uh, get as good of a tone as we can. Or sometimes, or you know, a couple of records I've done, we've just gone direct and then reamped later. Um, so I really, I really like being able to do this to go to like sit at my house and have everything mic'd up and have the time to really get the tones perfect going in and not like do them and then try to sort them out later um so yeah i'm really stoked about it can't wait to get this out <laughs> How you feel? You feel good about it? I'm tired, boss. <laughs> I'm tired, boss. How's it feel to uh, be done and then have to sit here and watch Kevin ed edit all your crappy takes? <laughs> editing. Uh, it's really not that bad. There's not that much editing going on. That's what we're gonna. That's what we're gonna say anyway. <laughs> now we're doing the fun part. Oh, now we taking the drums apart. That ain't gonna take long. It's not gonna take long at all. So here's the drum set. What is this, Brad? What is your drum set? It's um, circles. Circles. Wooden circles. Sweet. So that I hit with sticks. Oh, it's a, a Mapex. Meridian Maple. Mapex Meridian Maple. With what are these? What are these weird looking symbols? Mono Classic Custom Dark. Mono Classic Custom Darks. And a mixture of Zildjian K and Zildjian A Splash and a Zildjian Oriental China. Doing the drum rig rundown. <laughs> it's a little tight in here. Get this view here. Well, you got the uh, Tama Speed, Speed Cobra, Cobra double, double kick pedals. Yee boy. Got some some 57s. Actually, these are these are my mics. These are Unidyne 3s from like the 70s. Supposedly they're more gooder. I don't I don't know. So yep, drums be done. We did it. Well, guys, it has been a long one, but we are done. We actually got everything done in one day. The original plan was for two days, but uh, we went a little long tonight and just got everything done. Brad just went in there and beast moded all the drum parts. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Um, I'm tired, and we're about to pack up and head back, but I uh, hope you guys like the video. Uh, I can't wait to get this stuff finished and get it released to get it out. So, um, you know, hit the subscribe button, share the video, like the video, you know, comment, all that stuff. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, I'll be back next week.